I will tell you a little bit how this musical started, how it came about. I am born in Czechoslovakia. I lived in Prague, and I was the first post-World War II bar mitzvah in Czechoslovakia. Uh, Mazel tov, yes. Uh, let me tell you how about my bar mitzvah. Uh, I had to learn the whole text by heart, phonetically, because there was nobody to teach me Hebrew alphabet. So then it came to the temple, I said my lines. Uh, we went home, we had dinner for six people. I got two gifts. One was a book about dinosaurs, the other one, my piano teacher knit new sleeves for my torn sweater. That was my bar mitzvah, I swear. Okay, not like here. Anyway, so uh, I knew very little about Jewish culture there. Uh, my parents went to the temple on high holidays and they played inside and I was playing cowboys and Indians outside. So that's what I knew. Then years later when we came with my wife to America, we opened a theater on Sunset Strip across from what used to be Tower Records. Anybody remembers? Yeah. Uh, and we had the theater there for about 15 years and we did everything from uh, classics to Gogol to pantomime to punk rock, you name it. Among others, I directed three shows with an actor called Baruch Lumet. Now, you may not have heard of Baruch Lumet. He was the father of the director, Sidney Lumet, who made 12 Angry Men, Pawn Broker, Prince of New York, and so on. Uh, Baruch Lumet was an actor with the Vilna Troupe, which was the most famous Yiddish theater in the world. It was in Poland. And he was invited in 1920, 22, I think, to come immediately to New York, to Second Avenue, because he needs to take over all the parts from a young actor who is leaving for Hollywood, whose name is Muni Weisenfreund. He became Paul Muni, of course, yes. So uh, Baruch took over all the parts and played them all the way to World War II. And after World War II, he was doing one-man shows. No, I directed three of them. One of them was Purim Spiel, where he played Haman, he played uh, Mordechai, he played uh, Queen Esther, everybody. Uh, then I did uh, with him Dibuk, which has, by Ansky, which has 29 parts, and he played every single one of them. Uh, Lea, possessed by the devil, the chorus of rabbis, the, the beggars, everybody. No, you think it's no big deal, okay? So he plays one man show. By that time, he was about 87 years old and he was blind. He knew if he does two steps this way, there's gonna be a chair where he can sit down. And if he does two steps this way, he's gonna fall off the stage. <laughs> so that's how he performed. And he was absolutely brilliant. And Baruch taught me about New York Yiddish theater and the whole tradition. And so uh, many things happened since, you will hear about it in the program, and then uh, eventually I decided to write a play which would be in the style of Jewish theater. It means lots of humor, lots of tears, and lots of heart. And that's what you will get tonight. So enjoy the show, and I'll see you later. Thank you. Good morning, Hugo. Good morning, Isaac. Motka! Motka! Oi, hurry up, Motka! The vegetable stand's open already. And Ida Feldstein has to have a baby just on the day of the fair. We're coming, Sarah. There's no one to sell to this early in the morning anyway. But you better get a run along, or otherwise Ida will have her baby without you. Why are you still so sleepy? I told you to take a cold shower. But, Mama, it's too cold this early in the morning. I wash myself with cold water every morning, and I survive. Oi, 
You know the difference between a cold shower and sin? When you take a cold shower, first you yell, Oi! And then you say, Ah. Oh. When you sin, first you say, Ah. Oh. And then you go, Oi! <laughs> Are you telling him stories again? No. Motka, why do we never learn? Look at him. Already his head is full of crazy stories. Just yesterday, there was a long line of, of people in the store. I rushed in to help out. What do you think your son was doing? Hmm? Standing by the counter, telling our customers jokes. But, <laughs> Mama, people like to laugh. And when I tell them jokes, they come back again. <laughs> they come back because they need what we sell. Isaac, a customer comes in. I say, what do you wish? They say, mm, this or this. I give it to them, get my money, say zaikotun, and that's all. And if they need something else, they come back. Oh, let them be, Sarah. A good word is also important sometimes. You'll be quiet, you. <laughs> I know well where he learned all that nonsense. Maybe you want our son to join the comedians? Oi, 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 oi. Oi, Ida, now look what you did. You made me forget my bag with the instruments. I don't get to Ida on time, it'll be your fault. And Hugo's, where did I put my bag? Where did I put, oh, here it is. Oh, come on, Ma, Hugo's a good boy. He's still young, let him enjoy. Enjoy, enjoy, fit. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Is Mama gone? Mm-hmm. Papa, is it a sin for a Jew to tell jokes? Sin? My dear son. Jokes are what kept us Jews going through thousands of years of slavery and misery. Other nations buckled under, but we always said a prayer and a joke, and so we survived. Look at our great prankster, Hershely Ostropola. He lived in a period darker than the night of Toledo, but he laughed. You know, even on his deathbed, he said, Remember, my friends, when you go to lift me up to place me in my coffin, don't lift me up by my arms. I'm ticklish. <laughs> Papa, I've, I've heard that in larger towns, there are theaters where Jews tell jokes to other Jews. Oh, it's possible, but it must be very difficult. You see, when you tell a Frenchman a joke, he will laugh three times. First, when you tell him the joke, second, when you explain it to him, and then a third time, once he understands it. But an Englishman is quite different. You tell an Englishman a joke, he will laugh twice. First, when you tell him the joke, and again, when you explain it. They just never really understand it. Oh, but Germans are the worst. They will only laugh when you tell them the joke. They won't let you explain it. But <laughs> telling jokes to other Jews, <laughs> you know, before you can finish, you'll be interrupted. First of all, they've heard it before. Secondly, what business do you have telling a joke when you don't know how? In the end, they decide to tell you the same story themselves, but in a much better version than yours. Papa, how come you know so many wonderful stories? Where did you learn them? Where did I learn them? I, I don't really know. I, I guess just from watching life around me, living here in Belts. Oi, 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 Belts, my little town Belts. We have all we need, we are happy indeed. No, we'll never leave Bells. Bells, we'll never leave Bells. No one sees a frown in our town, just a smile, cause we'll never leave Bells. We all know every face from the marketplace to the temple in Bells. sense of humor. The world keeps asking an old question, tra-la, tra la ready dum Our answer is tra-la, tra la ready dum Oy vey, 
Sorry, we need them. And sometimes we even add. Try And so we are left with the old question. Tra-la, tra dee we Papa, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and since when does the world make sense? Just sing and laugh with us. And sometimes we even add try And so we are left with the old question. Tra la tra we Papa, I need your help. I want to become a comic. What do you need my help for? Well, you know that Mama would die of shame if people knew that her son was working in a theater. Well, if your heart tells you you should do something, maybe you should listen to it. Otherwise, you'll never be happy. You'll always be asking yourself, what if? And as for your mother, don't worry. She'll survive. I'll talk to her. Thank you, Papa. So where will you go? Well, I've heard that there's a Jewish theater in Munkach. So? So what? So what are you standing here for? Go pack your suit. Oh, I already did. <laughs> but I thought you said she'll survive. Yeah, she will, but what about me? <laughs> Sarah, Where what happened? Back so soon. Did I have her baby in good health? Yes. And lucky for Hugo, I arrived. It was high time. I was screaming in pain. I told her mother, go, boil some water. I washed my hands, put my bed on the table, opened it up, and what did I find instead of my instruments? Hugo's red underwear. <laughs> Cute, funny, ha, ha, always with the jokes. I'm gonna get that boy, where is he? Where is that boy? Come here, where are you? Psst, you can come out now. Oh, do you need Gail? Oh, thank you, Papa. Oh. And you'll see, I'll, I'll make you proud of me. All right, all right, just remember, you're a boy from Bells, and you'll always have a place to come back to now. I might not be here, your mama may not be here, but Bells, Bells will always be here. Goodbye, Papa. Give Mama a kiss from me. It's your turn next, huh? You'll finish the dress later, Rivka. But do you like it? Yeah, I think it looks good. We'll put a few feathers up here, huh? Mm -hmm. We'll put a few feathers down here, huh? It'll be terrific, don't worry. Are you ready, Max? Sing for me, please. Excuse me. Yeah, is, is, is this the theater? Yes, but we're closed now. Oh, I, I know. I, I was hoping to speak with the director. He's over there. The one with the beard? No, oh, the one at the table. Oh, excuse me, Annette. What's happening here? Uh, someone to see you, Papa. May I help you? Oh, uh, yes, sir. My name's Hugo Schwartz. I'm an actor, and I, I hoped and wondered that uh, uh, maybe... Listen, wait. You'll have to wait to wonder until after the rehearsals. Huh? I'm very busy right now. Go sit down and be quiet, all oh, right? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, Good. sir. Oh, are you... <laughs> are you all right? Uh, yes, sir. Good. Annette, please, sing, huh? I think we got it! Yes! <laughs> It'd be the first Moses joke. Moritz, tell us, who is the mother of Moses? Pharaoh's daughter. But that can't be right, don't you know? She found him in a basket floating down denial. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. You'll have to come up with something better. Annette, please. Yeah? <laughs> Wait, 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 wait! Ibby, the other Moses joke. Moritz, tell me, what is this nonsense you've written in your homework? Moses had a headache? Grandpa told me. What exactly did Grandpa tell you? 
He said, God gave Moses two tablets. <laughs> hey, <laughs> two tablets. <laughs> I don't want to hear another Moses joke again, huh? Never. But these were successful in Budapest. Then take them back to Budapest. Listen, you should be happy we're willing to perform in this stable. <laughs> we're doing you a favor. Please, don't do me such favors. And uh, where are you going to find two other comedians to work in this hole? Don't worry, just go. We're going. We're going. <laughs> Good luck. And when you get back to Budapest, say hello to Moses. Your jokes are so old, he probably told them to himself. And that please say, huh? <laughs> But you're not listening to me. Uh, I'm sorry. Hey, young man. Oh, did you call me? Yeah. Didn't you say you was an actor? Oh, yes, sir. So, where'd you perform? Oh, well, in, in Bells, my father and I had a store. You did? And I, I didn't what? You never acted before. Well, not really. Maybe you should get Ibby and Tibby back. At least oh, they're better than nothing. Never. Listen, can you tell some jokes? Oh, yes, sir. Good. But... But what? But they're, they're only old jokes and, and... There's no new jokes. Just some people put new coats on them. Huh? <laughs> Listen, go home, get ready. You're going to go on tonight. I, I am? Yeah. Oh, thank yeah. you, sir. I, I know that I'll be happy in this town. Good. Just be funny. We'll both be happy. Oh, huh? Thank you, sir. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, so, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I, oh, now, that could oh. be funny. <laughs> Just forget the overture! Sazev el mutmar, tu bish tolan, parish bombal, vut mindene sakan, eshkan neval, ken yesh ked betan sulta gadam. This is how they sing it in Budapest. I hear all the singers do it. Again, Budapest. You sing like that here, they're gonna throw right in tomatoes at you. Come, stand up, sing. Nice, sir. Eh? Good. Sing, please. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> what now? Could I use Ivy and Tibby in my act? Good for Can't you just tell some jokes? No, for, for that new coat. Yeah. All right, just be funny. Are you all going back on the next train to Budapest? Oh, thank you, sir. Yeah. Hmm. Forget it, Ness. You'll be fine. All right. Hey, well, listen, wait. Tell Rivka to take the top of the dress off so your shoulders will show, eh? But how will it look? I'll be almost naked. Just do it. But what will I tell my mother? Tell her. That's how they wear it in Budapest. <laughs> your name? Annette. Annette, that was beautiful, Annette. Oh, you heard. Sure I heard, Chopin. And me, you didn't hear? Oh. She certainly has some mozzo sopranos. Oh, Max, that, that, that reminds me, I haven't seen you for at least 10 years. Well, not 10, but maybe about seven. So where have you been for seven years? I went to Tibet to meditate with the Dalai Lama. Really, meditate and for seven years? So, so what did you come up with? I discovered life is like a deep, deep well. No. Well, if no, then no. 
<laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Arong Chila Cabaret, the Golden Star. My name is Hugo Schwartz, and I come from a small town called Bells. Now, it's strange to me how few people have ever heard of Bells, because to me, it's the most amazing place in the world. Now, you'll probably say, oh, what's so interesting about a matchmaker? A rabbi, a henpecked husband. Now, now, maybe they're the same as that lady over there or, or the gentleman in the third row. But to me, they're the most wonderful people in the world. Allow me, therefore, to share with you the people I love, the people of Bells. <laughs> Who died, your wife? No, my mother-in-law. Mother-in-law? That's not bad either. So, when are you coming over for dinner, Mr. Cat? Uh, now, let's see. On Monday, I eat at Stern's. Uh, I'll be sick on Tuesday. On Wednesday, I eat at Adler's. I'll be sick on Thursday. How does Friday sound to you? Is there a doctor in the house? I'm a doctor. Have I got a daughter for you? <laughs> Listen, Arthur, as long as it's Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, let's forgive each other everything and be friends again. That's fine with me. Oh, I'm so glad, Arthur. I wish the same to you that you wish to me. There you go. You're starting again. Listen, Rachel, we have nine children, right? Right. And the youngest one is only eight years old, right? Right. So I keep thinking lately, how come that last one looks completely different from the other eight? Tell me the truth, Rachel. That last one is not mine. Oh, come you silly. That one is yours. This is not my bells. This place is somewhere else, but still it's more and rings with friendly cheer. But I know that I'll be happy here. Thank you. But you could have told the same jokes without the two Hungarian goulashes. Oh, nonsense. Ain't often you know it. This way, those old jokes look new and funny again. And anyway, how about introducing us? Yeah, it's my wife, Bertha, and my daughter, Rosa. It's nice to meet you. Tomorrow, I hope you'll come for dinner. And don't you tell me that you'll be sick because you eat at Stern's tonight. <laughs> Thank you. So, you are Rosa? Yes, but at home they call me Rivka. Thank you for your laughter, Rivka. Of course. Sometimes audiences just need a little nudging to realize that it's all right to laugh. And I feel like I needed to make up for laughing at you when you tripped. So. Oh, no. So, I'll see you at dinner tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> Fate comes and takes me by the hand, leads me to this promised land. Once wine was never sweet, I walked through empty streets, my life was incomplete, then she appears. Rivkala, you are the sun that warms my face, Rivkala. 
you brought me to this state of grace in all my dreams your being seems to haunt my very soul you and you alone is the longing in my soul Rivkala, that which is wonderful and new Rivkala, 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 it's you chase after girls for dogs they may chase after cars but when they catch them can they drive them oh that <laughs> one's excellent mr herskovitz i'll make sure them. to write it down as soon as i get home here's oh. your hamlet and here <laughs> zuzine oder nicht zuzine thou that's, knew what is the quest that's for your troubles <laughs> thank you very much young man maybe i can tell you another joke yes some other time no i don't think it's oh, oh i'm so sorry i'm sorry uh, uh, no. listen Rivka, did I do something to offend you? What? No, not at all. Ever since that dinner at your parents' house, you've been avoiding me. You'll, you'll hardly even look at me. I'm sorry, I just didn't want to bother you. Bother me? I'm sure you have more important things to do than talk to me. No, I, I'm, I'm all alone here in this town, and I thought you were the one person I really could talk to. What about Annette? I saw you having quite the conversation with her the other day. Annette, that was rehearsal. She couldn't care less for someone from a town in the middle of Galicia. Don't you see, Rivka, that I care for you? Me? Rivka, love, you are the sun up in the sky. Rivka, love, you are a mother's lullaby. What's that sudden shaking? Ever since that day that I met you at the theater, I've only been able to think of you. I may not have much right now, but someday I will be the best Jewish comic around. I will go to, to Lemberg, to Krakow. I may even make it as far as Prague. <laughs> Do you believe me? Yes. Dearest one, to you I'll never be untrue. Dearest one, dearest one, my heart belongs to you. We break a cup at a wedding. The pieces that some of you will keep were not meant to bring good luck. They are to be saved so that we may place them over the eyes of the bride or the groom, whoever may die first. You might ask yourself, why such a sad thought at a happy occasion? It is because we Jews must remember that happiness and joy are passing like in a dream. Such is life. Sweet as raisins, yet bitter as almonds. Mazel I'm more nervous than on opening nights. <laughs> Rivka, let me see how beautiful my daughter is, huh? Everyone, please take your seats. Refreshments will be served. I hope you'll be happy. And that crazy dream of yours comes true. And if it doesn't, remember, Papa can always use you in the store. Mama, how serious is it? The doctor said he won't get any better. What are you two whispering up? All right. Mama! It's his wedding! Hugo, we have to talk about that show of yours. <laughs> that singer you have, she had less clothes on than your mama had on her wedding night. <laughs> Papa, when the show's over, Rivka and I will come to Bell's and visit you, and, and you and I can stay up all night laughing like we used to. It's a promise. Hey! I'd like to make a toast, but first I have a story to tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The miraculous Rabbi Landa was once asked by a Gentile whether rabbis are allowed to sleep with their wives. He answered, yes, 
but they need the help of 100 angels. Two angels are used to lift the rabbi and carry him to his wife's bed. The remaining 98 angels are used to pull him away. <laughs> the way these two look at each other, maybe 98 angels might not be enough. <laughs> what? Make a fool of yourself. Oh, come on. Mama, let me make a fool of myself. All right. What I'm really trying to say is this. May they look at each other the same way. 120 years from now. <laughs> and now, the kosher tax. Oh, yes. yes. Children, please. Robin, Velen, Vira, Hasana. Ein Riktig, Yiddish, Hasana. Klesmer, Velen, Spielen. Und mir wellen vielen Tom gane da moi betus rain shine Isn't this a beautiful wedding? A real Yiddish wedding? Let the fiddler play a wedding song today Happiness is with us here to stay Robin, Velen, Vira, Hasina, Heinrich, Zieg, Yiddish, Hasina, Glasmer, Velen, Schmielin, Und mir, Velen, Feelin, Tom, Gene, de Moy, Vetus, Rancha. Bravo! Hey! <laughs> I don't, did you hear the one about the rabbi who was asked if a man can sleep with a woman on Yom Kippur? You know, it being the holiest of our holidays. And the rabbi, he scratched his beard and he said, Yes, but only with his own wife, because all pleasures are forbidden that day. <laughs> oh, God, sit down. What? You had too much wine. Oh, let him talk, oh. Sarah. Today's the day to celebrate and enjoy, yes? We're all here to have fun today, huh? And now it is time for the Makatunum time. Oh, oh yes! Yeah. Yeah. Mama, 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 please! Just down. No one can! <laughs> Faster, maestro! <laughs> I never told you. I'm sorry. I, I, I too could not 
say the words. <laughs> I love you, Papa. in the last car and the conductor promised to take it off very carefully. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mama, that I won't be able to come back with you now. It's all right. For your father, it makes no difference if you say goodbye to him here or there. No, no, I, I'm sorry that I won't be there for you. I know how difficult it'll be to come home to an empty house where everything will remind you of him. I'll be all right. Rivka and I will come back and visit you soon. Yes, soon. It's time. I will never see you again. What? What? You will never come back to Bells. No, Mama, I'll come back soon and, and you'll come visit us. We'll see each other often, you'll see. Let me get this for you. No. Don't come with me. I have to learn to take care of myself. Tall, now you're short. You used to have blonde hair and blue eyes, and now you have brown hair and brown eyes. But but why, Obelis? Why? Hey, excuse me, but you must be crazy or blind. My name is not Obelis. Oy vey. Even your name you changed. <laughs> Shot, still, mock me, kind of rude. Die, 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 die. Listen, Con, I tell you a good joke. How many rolls can you eat on an empty stomach? Me? I don't know. Maybe three or four. Wrong! Only one! The others won't be on an empty stomach! Oh, that's good, that's good! Uh, Sarah, how many rolls can you eat on an empty stomach? Who, oh, me? Not even one! Oh, pity. I could have told you such a nice joke. Shop, still, makne kein geruder, der Rebbe geht schon tanzen wieder. Shop, still, makne kein geruder, der Rebbe geht schon tanzen Did you see the show? I did, only the end. So what do you think? Is, is it funnier this way? Miss Annette, are you coming? I'm coming, I'm coming! As if he couldn't wait a minute, fatso. So, good night, I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. You seem sad, Rivka. Is he mean to you? Believe me, men are all the same. So, good night. What's wrong? The mailman brought this for you, too. You are to report to your hometown of Bells on December 5th, 1917, for induction to the 6th Regiment of the Imperial Army of His Highness Franz Josef II, Emperor of the Austro-Hungary... But this is crazy! They told me in Bells they couldn't use me because I have flat feet. Austria's <laughs> losing the war. They're taking everyone now. But what are they going to do with a flat-footed comedian on the Italian front? I don't even know a single Italian joke. You go. It's not funny. They're... Some of the boys from Munkot are crossing the border into Russia. The war is over there. Maybe we can go live there. What are you talking about? There's a revolution going on there. And what about our plans? What about Lemberg, Krakow, and Prague? Did you forget about them? I'm scared, Hugo. Oh, Rivka, please, please don't cry. Listen, how quickly could you pack? Mm -hmm. Just two suitcases. Leave the rest with your parents. Oh, are you crazy? Where are we going to go? What are we going to live Look, on? Rivka, you you're going to have to trust me. People want to laugh everywhere. A good comic is always welcome. We'll leave tomorrow. We'll travel from town to town. We'll go to Lemberg. We'll go to Krakow. And with God's help, We'll make it all the way to Prague. 
You look just like, well, it was beautiful. Boy, I sure want to sleep with her again. <laughs> oh, you, you've already slept with her? No, but I already wanted to. Oh, well, anyway, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to welcome you to the New Year's Eve show for 1928 here at the Zlata Hviezda Cabaret, the Golden Star. My name is Hugo Schwartz, and I came to Prague. I, I'm sorry, but did I hear someone snickering? Well, if it's on account of my name, let me tell you that it is only by mere coincidence that Hugo did not become one of the most important names in the history of mankind. You don't believe me? Let me explain. Now, you're probably familiar with Mary and Joseph. Well, they were putting their baby to sleep in a manger when they were visited by these three kings. Now, one of the kings was so tall that upon entering, he hit his head into a low beam and he screamed out in pain, Oh, Jesus! At which Mary's eyes lit up. She turned to Joseph and she said, You see, Yoso, that's what I call a good name. And you just keep repeating Hugo, Hugo, Hugo. Again, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Hugo Schwartz. And, and this is my pianist, Max, which reminds me, Max, I haven't seen you for such a long time. It, it must have been at least ten years. Well, not ten, but maybe about seven. So, where have you been for seven years? I went to Tibet to meditate with the Dalai Lama. Really? Meditate? And for seven long years? So... What did you come up with? I discovered life is like a pair of baby's pants. Really? How come? Short and full of crap. <laughs> Again, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you will have a wonderful New Year's Eve of 1928 right here in Prague. <laughs> Who died and, and why is that woman crying so much? It was her bridegroom. He died of a stroke just as they were walking down the aisle. Lucky. Saved in the nick of time. <gasps> la, 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 What's new, Lou Stig? And won't you go to France this summer? No, that's fair if we didn't go last year. This year we won't go to Italy. Oh. <laughs> la, 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 la. La, 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 la. Bertha, I heard 
glad your daughter got married. Oh, how's she doing? <laughs> Let me tell you what a great husband she's got. All she has to do all day long is sit in front of the mirror, play oh, cards, eat candy. Ah, uh, mazel tov. Mm -hmm. And I heard your son got married too. How's he doing? Ugh, don't even mention it. The wife he's got. All she does all day long is sit in front of the mirror, Ugh. play cards, <laughs> eat candy. <laughs> holy places in Europe, but the holiest of all is the Altnoy Synagogue here in Prague, the oldest in all of Europe. On its door is written, entering without a head cover is the same as committing adultery. Below, someone added a handwritten note, I've tried both, there's no comparison. <laughs> Enough about the children. Lou <laughs> <laughs> what am I to do? My son has went and got himself baptized. Oh, Feh, you are telling me. Uh -huh. I sent my son to university. Uh -huh. He did the same thing. Got himself baptized. Oi, 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 oi. Oi. What are we going to do? Here comes our rabbi. Let's ask him. Honorable Rabbi, what are we to do? Our sons have got themselves baptized. Fay, you're telling me. I sent my son to Budapest to study the Talmud. And what has he done? He's gone and got himself baptized. Oi, 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 oi. What are we going to do? I got it. Let's ask God for help. You whose name is blessed, blessed. give us help in our holiest hour. hour. Our sons have gone and got themselves baptized. Baptized. Hey, you're telling me. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. As we still have a little while before midnight, here again is Yvette with Confessions of an Actress. I stand here in a fog, the saddest girl in Prague. He has been to school, but he's no one's fool. Yet he's back undressing, lacking any shame. Isn't it depressing? But then who's to blame? He says he'll fix me good, just the way he should. We were never lovers, till I waited to do underneath the covers what he tells me to. Next comes the show, and then I take my check. Though it's been a thousand times now, more or less. He wears some fiendish disguises, he wore them all before. Ever since he met me as a little girl. So there are no surprises, what's an actress for? Yes. Yes, I know it's almost midnight, but there must be someone who could tell me. Uh, Schwartz. Rosa Schwartz. Yeah, yes, I will. Yes? Are you sure? And how's my wife? Well, thank you. Thank you. W will you please tell her th that I wish them both Happy New Year and that I'll be there first thing tomorrow morning? Yes, thank you. Schwartz! Schwartz, where is he? Uh, Mr. Vidichka, Mr. Vidichka, I'm a, I have to give the toast. Go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's almost midnight, and I had a very funny speech prepared for this occasion, which I've forgotten. Uh, 
you see, it really is quite funny. When, when I left my hometown of Bells 10 years ago, I had a dream of performing here in Prague. I knew that, that this would be a happy place for me. And it is. You see, I just found out that I've become the father of a baby girl. Oh. 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 This is not my bells, this place is somewhere else, but still it's more and rings with friendly cheer, but I know that I'll be about a surprise or Anna Anna do you know but daddy you promised if I got Fanny's on my school report you'll give me a surprise stop teasing her Hugo she really was a very good girl oh, all right three women against one weak man I give up uh Mr. Vomachka yes Mr. Schwartz how may I help you I think we're ready for that little package I left with you yes sir coming right up Now, Erica, you're a big girl, and you know that times are difficult. We just don't have enough money to pay for such big presents, so I, I thought it would be all right if I got you something else. You know, your grandfather always used to say, when you can't afford a chicken, a herring is good enough. <laughs> you understand? Yes, Daddy. And here it is. Thank you. That's pretty. <laughs> Erica, did you say thank you to your father and your mother? Huh? Thank you, Daddy. Mommy. Stop teasing her. Oh, I, I almost forgot. Uh, Mr. Vomachka, wasn't there another small package with the dress? Maybe it was some shoes or, Coming. or Coming. something. I Uh, what do you think, Rivka? Of course, as long as Anna doesn't mind running after oh, you. Oh, no, no, I don't mind it all, as long as she's careful, doesn't crash into anybody. All right, all okay. right. I wasn't sure that you got her the bicycle. I had it delivered Friday. You really love her, don't you? Oh, yes. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night thinking you're still unhappy, I didn't have a boy. Maybe we should try again. Well, what are you talking about? The doctor said it could be very dangerous for you to become pregnant again. I know, but I know how much you wanted a son. Rivka, and I... do we love each other? Yes. And do we have a beautiful child? Yes, of course we do. Then why all this sadness? Please, I'm... please be happy. I'm sorry, I must, I must look terrible. No. I... The sky is dark, the snow is deep, the moon is gleaming. I wish for a boy in my arms gently dreaming. When my father held me tight, the world stopped turning. 
Maybe that's why for a son I am yearning. I lulu lu Unter jedes Wiegeles Steht a Klorweiß Ziegeles Dos Ziegeles Gefor in Handeln Dos wird sein dein Beruf Brojinkes mit Mandeln Schlaf je Schlaf, je idole, schlaf, je idole, schlaf, I luli lu. Ever since he met me as a little girl So there are no surprises What's an actress for? He's the master And again I play the Someone get the magician! Quick! I'm sorry No, it's, it's alright so Here, sorry. drink something Thank you You know, it's funny I always thought to myself, look at Yvette. She's talented and beautiful. Half of Prague is falling at her feet. Limousines waiting after every show. She's a happy woman. Maybe I wasn't looking right. I'm scared, but you can't understand that. You have a beautiful daughter, a wife who's pregnant again, and you always have some place to go. But me, I couldn't have a career and a marriage. So I became the best goddamn singer in Prague. Now when I look in the mirror, I see the face of an old woman. What am I going to do when those limousines stop waiting for me after the show? Well, you'll still be the best goddamn singer in Prague. You're a nice man, Hugo. Maybe, maybe I can repay you for your kindness someday. Man, that must have been the longest magic act I have ever done. I'm so sorry you had to go on like that. It can happen to anybody. You go, you better hurry up. Those musicians cannot play on for Thank you. Listen, if, if you need to talk more after the show, we could get a cup of coffee. Uh, Rosa and Erica will be coming back to Prague in the morning. How is Rosa? <laughs> Never better. And the doctor says that, that the child should be here in the next few weeks, so you're right. I'm a happy man. Welcome back to the second half of our show. You know, where's Hugo? He's back on stage. What's happened? Oh no. No hope for poets without it, not even on her birthday. The desperate ones just blew their brains out for Kiki, for Kiki, for our beautiful Kiki, for Kiki, for Kiki, for our beautiful Kiki. To all of you, a happy new year, 1937. Happy new year, everybody. Woo! <laughs> you thought I was a happy woman and I replied that you were the one who was happy? Do you have to leave? Yes, if, if I'm to keep my sanity. Rivka is slowly falling apart. First it was the baby and, and then her parents. 
she has to get out of the city, and, and, and I, I can't live like this in fear anymore, worrying every night what she'll do while I'm at the club. But we remember your first night here. It was also New Year's Eve. You were so sure you were going to be happy here. And I was. I, I was. I, I, I knew that, that I would spend the rest of my life here, but now I, I can't. I can't. Yvette. I'm sorry it was Annette. No, it's Jeanette. How silly of me. They don't even look remotely alike, and the name's worlds apart. Well, she's gone. Boy, the leg's on her, huh? Long, all the way to the floor. Oh, come now, Max. This is a classy joint, which reminds me I haven't seen you for at least ten years. Well, not ten, but maybe about seven. So, where have you been for seven years? I went to Tibet to meditate with the Dalai Lama. Really? Meditate? And for seven long years? So what did you come up with? I discovered life is like a sewer. Really? How come? What you get out of it depends on what you put into it. <laughs> well, anyway, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Golden Stern Cabaret, the Golden Star. My name's Hugo Schwartz, and I'm a very happy man to be here with you in Vienna, the city of the Wiener Volts, Wiener Schnitzel, and of that very smart Jewish man who says that all Jews suffer from one terrible disease, Mishpachitis. <laughs> the gentleman in question is, of course, Sigmund Freud. It seems nowadays everyone talks about Freud. Why, just the other day I heard Mrs. Spiegel telling Mrs. Leibowitz, can you imagine? The doctor says that my Moritz suffers from an Oedipus complex, replied the other woman. So what are you worried about? Oedipus schmedipus, so long he loves her mother. <laughs> Again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm a very happy man to be here with you in Vienna, and I hope that you'll have a wonderful evening. Who died? Rothschild. Oh, was he a relative of yours? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. <laughs> <laughs> tell you, Mrs. Stein. I saw that bride you kept telling me about. So, what do you say? Isn't she as pretty as a picture? Well, she's not bad as far as looks are concerned, but she limps a little. Eh, so she limps a little. One would hardly notice. I'm telling you, Mr. Tannenbaum, supposing you marry a woman without a limp. Mm -hmm. You go for your honeymoon, let's say, to Switzerland. You slip and fall on the ice, she breaks her leg. Now mm -hmm. she'll be in the hospital for weeks and weeks. Hey, the trouble with the doctors, not to mention all the money it costs. Doctor says, she'll walk again, but she'll always have a limp. Here, you get the same thing, without all the trouble, and for free! I'm telling you, Mr. Tannenbaum, what a bargain this one is! 
Station. Well, I have just a p- a p- a p- a p- applied for a, p- a, p- a, p- a position. I had an, ap- a p- a p- a p- a p- an appointment. Oh, you wanted to get a job here? Yes, yes. yes. They have an, op- an, op- an opening for, for an, 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 annou- an announcer. <laughs> well, did you get the job? <laughs> no, no, no. Those, those people, they're all anti- anti-Semites. <laughs> Mama, if I get married, will I get a man like Papa? Oh, yes, darling. And if I don't get married, will I become an old maid like Mrs. Spitz? Yes, darling. Oh, boy. We women don't have much choice. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, I'm new in this town. Can you tell me where the rabbi lives? Ah, he lives in the Schwarzenbergstrasse, number 11. Wait, the Schwarzenbergstrasse, number 11? Yeah. Well, how is it possible that the rabbi lives in the same house where the local brothel is located? <laughs> what kind of nonsense is this, young man? Our saintly rabbi lives in the Schwarzenbergstrasse, number 11, while the brothel oh, is located in the Radetzky Strasse, which is more than two blocks away in the opposite direction. That way. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Court is now in session. Mr. Goldberg, tell us how old you are. Why, 73, bis 120. Uh, please just simply answer the question. How old are you? Uh, 73, bis 120. Listen, this is a court. Just answer the question, no addition, no comments. Excuse me, Your Honor. Bis 120 means to 120. It's an old Jewish saying used to preserve longevity. I would like to remind the defense that this is a court of law, and we need simple answers from the witness. Mr. Goldberg, one last time, tell us how old are you? Oh, just as I said, Your Honor, 73. All right, I've had it! Excuse me! Your Honor, let me put the question to the witness myself. Mr. Goldberg, how old are you? 73! Uh. <laughs> Kohn has heard all those terrible rumors about Hitler wanting to occupy Austria, so he decided that he would rather emigrate. Now, at the passport office, they asked him to which country he wanted to go. Realizing that he'd never given it a thought, Kohn asked for a globe. Let's see. Oh, I couldn't go here. No, I couldn't go to that country. No way could I go there. Oh, how about... No, that country's even worse. Officer, listen, you wouldn't happen to have another globe here, would you? This is not my pals. This place is somewhere else, but still it's poor and ring with friendly cheer Miss Mueller! Oh, uh, Jeanette, I had a question about the second song. Get out of my way. Miss Mueller! What's wrong with her? She just quit. quit. She doesn't want to be associated with Jews. But... But this is a Jewish cabaret. Yeah, singers. Ach, there are a dime a dozen. Listen, there's someone waiting for you at the entrance. Oh, my wife? No, a man. Are you in trouble? 
No. Would you please ask him to meet me in my dressing room? Get out. And I promise you wouldn't have to sweep any floors either. <laughs> Mr. Schwartz? Yes, how may I help you? Well, I hope you can. My name is Stein, Heinrich Stein. Perhaps you've heard of me. The Heinrich Stein of Berlin? That's the one. Although I suppose I should say it's Heinrich Stein of Vienna now. You see, I've opened up a little cabaret here. I'm calling it Der Zerbrockener Spiegel. It's nothing like your cabaret, but all the same, I hope you'll come in and take in a show of ours some night. Uh, who knows? I might make your little business proposition. Here's my card. Thank you. I look forward to it. places in the world. Oh, and, and with that in mind, Rivka, I, I wrote Mama a letter yesterday. I asked her to sell the house and to come live with us here. Hugo, you know she'll never leave Bells. She never came to see us in Prague. She doesn't even know Erica yet. All the more reason for her to come soon. Besides, Vienna's special. We'll be happy here, right? Right. So give me a kiss. Daddy, can I have some cotton candy? If your mommy allows. Of course. Hey, uh, can we get a piece of that pink fluff? We are only the good old boys. We like to make a lot of noise. We like to laugh. <laughs> we like to dance. We like to dress up fancy. Hell! Get out of here! Go back to Germany. That's where Hitler is. Daddy, who are these people? What is this, Hugo? Why can they parade around Vienna this way? <laughs> it's nothing, Gnadige Frau. It's just a couple of crazy men that like to dress up and march around. There's nothing to worry about. This is Vienna. This is the city of Strauss, of Schubert, of Beethoven. This is the city of the Wiener Waltz, Wiener Schnitzel. Oh, oh Hitler! Hell! Oh. <clears throat> hey, mister, did you want some of that pink fluff for your young lady here? Well, uh... Hugo? Let's go. Come on, no. Erica, we're going home. Rivka, don't, don't be upset. You you heard what the man said. This, Erica, this come back here. It's the city of Strauss. Getting scared, Jews? Well, I'll have plenty of business with or without them. and 
very fast Each to their lonely beat A frightened faceless mess Couples dragging round Not making any sound Tired and bored to care But there's not much there Sunday That Sunday Gray Sunday Sunday Just like that They search each other's eyes But there is nothing left They say their last goodbyes Their feelings are bereft Puts on a suit and vest She wears her Sunday Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Broken Mirror. Now, as you all know, Austria is a landlocked country, but that doesn't stop it from owning several cruise ships that make a lovely little voyage from Venice to Cannes. And as we all know, there's no anti-Semitism in Austria. <laughs> in fact, many Jews take the cruise as well. It was on one of these pleasure voyages that the elderly Jewish gentleman, Mr. Teitelbaum, well, he died of the bubonic plague. So immediately, the sympathetic captain called upon his midshipmen. Schmidt! I ask you, Captain. Ich bin Hans Jürgen Christoph Maria Eric Heinrich Schmidt. Schmidt, listen close. There is a dead Jew in cabin number 167. At night, under cover of darkness, when nobody can see you, sneak into his cabin, take that dead Jew, and throw him into the ocean before someone else can catch the disease. Aye, aye, Captain. Ich bin Hans Jürgen Christoph Maria Eric Heinrich Schmidt. Request permission to leave. Yeah, yeah, go, 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 go. The next day, the captain went to go check on the situation, and he was surprised to find poor Mr. Teitelbaum still dead in cabin number 167. So he immediately called back his midshipmen. Schmidt! Oh. Oh. Ah, hi, uh, Captain. Ich bin Hans Schmidt. I think you skipped part of your name. <laughs> but anyway, Schmidt, my God in evil, what happened? You were supposed to take that Jew and throw him into the ocean. Why didn't you? But, but we did, Herr Captain. You did? From cabin number 167? From cabin 176. <laughs> Do you mean to tell me that there was a dead Jew in cabin number 176 too? Well, he, he said he wasn't dead, but... But, but, but you know Jews, they, they are such liars. Unfortunately, it's what you're gonna have to hear, and you're definitely not gonna like this one either. Juden! Juden! Where are the Judens? I hate them so much! Where are they? Oh, I wanna get them up! Hey, you! Jew! Get over here! All right, Jew, tell everybody here! Who caused all the economic turmoil in Germany? The Jews and the bicycle riders. Hi. Uh, why the bicycle riders? No, this one you like. And why the Jews? Oh, oh, I know. Now I get it. It's, it's political. Uh, it's it's blue, very it's political. Yep. Yeah, okay. Now go! It's not everyone's cup of tea. <laughs> We are the only good old boys. We like to make a lot of noise. We like to laugh, hee hee. We like to dance in my god. We like to dress up fancy. Whoa! Oh, 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 So they just didn't understand.
understand that it was satire. Yeah. Is that, is that what you're saying? It's Brechtian, really. <laughs> okay, okay. Herr Stein, won't you come in, please? Why? What happened? Nothing. The child was asleep since eight and woke up crying. It must have been a nightmare. Uh, excuse me, I forgot to introduce you two. This is Hugo Schwartz. He's a fellow actor. This is Frau Schultz. She's my house manager. It's a pleasure. Likewise. Won't you please sit down? Well, I better be going. <laughs> Good night. Please, make yourself comfortable. I just need to see Jacob to bed. It'll only be a few minutes. Sometimes he just wakes up in the middle of the night to make sure that I've come home all right. Now, what are you going to have to drink? Because I have some leftover gin, but I also have a bottle of homemade Slivovitz that a friend brought me from Moravia. Uh, just a, a small glass, please. Excellent. Now, I, I wasn't aware that you're married. Oh, well, I'm not anymore. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, no, you misunderstand. She's alive and well. It's... It's me that's dead to her. Please. See, Hugo, a few days after the Nuremberg Laws were issued, she left me and Jacob. He was a few weeks old at the time. Now she's back in Berlin. She's preserving her Aryan bloodline with an officer of the uh, SS. That's what I get for marrying a shiksa, I guess. I, I, now I, I understand, but, but, but how, how can you take care of Jacob and the theater all by yourself? because I love both very much. But you're wondering why I invited you here. You see, Hugo, when I saw you perform, I thought to myself, this, this is a talented comedian. Thank you. But he's wasting his talent. He's wasting his talent on old jokes from the shtetl. No, there really are no... You see, talent movies. is a weapon. Now is the time to fight. And we can't afford to waste a talent like yours. Hugo, you and I working together, we could put together a political cabaret. One that would open up the eyes of every single person who thinks that they can survive just by waiting out the storm. Because the storm is coming, and it will take all of us now, with it. You don't and really think that Hitler will, will, will come here? I mean, Austria's neutral. For Hitler, nothing is neutral! I apologize. Sometimes I forget I'm not on stage. You see, I was thinking that you and I could merely... Drink to the idea of a future partnership. I, I don't think that I'm the right person. For you, it's different. You've done political theater all your life. You're, you're, you're used to that. But, but I'm a, a boy from a small town in Galicia who isn't interested in politics. I want to make people laugh. That's all. I, I admire your kind of theater and, and having to endure people walking out like what happened tonight. But, but it's not my kind of theater. Hugo... I care so much for our, for my cause, but I am terrible at writing jokes. Look, as an artist, you have a responsibility. No, I, I, I just couldn't do it. I, I think that that each of us helps in a different way. You tell people where it hurts. I give them aspirin for the pain. I'm sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Hugo, let's. Let's drink to the health of our children instead. To your daughter. To your son. Hitler says Austria belongs to the Germans, latest edition. German army on board is latest edition. Run, Hugo! Up a grove! Ah! Run! Go! Oh! Max! Oh! Oh! And a heart! Oh. To the wall! Achtung! Oh. Stop! They just work here! 
In American bars, they have signs that say, don't shoot the piano player. Maybe you should get one. Oh. Schwartz, take him home and you go home too. There are no more Jewish theaters in Vienna. Let's go. Where are the others? Let's go. Hey, wait for me. friend. What happened? The Gestapo. They took Herstein with them. They said he was a communist spy. No. And what about Jacob? Where's Jacob? Frau Schultz. Where's the child? He's asleep in my apartment. Tomorrow when they find out Herstein has a son, they will come and take him to some institution. But, but you... You can't allow that. I am an old woman. I cannot take care of a small child. Herr Stein will never come back. Let, let, let me take him. My, my wife and I could take care of him. But you are Jewish too. Who knows how long before they come for you. And anyway, Jacob is better off this way. He may get into a nice family. No, please, I, I, I beg you, we're leaving Vienna in a few hours. He'll be safe with us. Does, does the Gestapo know that the child's with you? No. He was playing downstairs when it happened. Well, then you can't be held responsible if he's gone. Here, th this is all the money I have on me. You know, if I call the Gestapo now, they would take you immediately. Yes. Here, you will need this. Thank you. But peace loving Moscow, the leftists are right in Moscow, and the Jews are delight in Moscow. Vienna, don't fret, I'll love you, and yet in Moscow, I can forget. New York, New York, will we be welcome in New York? Crowded, lively. Unknown and far away New York Liberty welcomes me in New York We'll be rich and be free in New York Vienna, don't fret We love you and yet In New York We can forget Goodbye, Vienna We start a new show And we know as we go that our has been goodbye Vienna How glad we may act as we sadly look back and remember the good times again The days that we took our Sunday walks Cafes full of laughs and happy talks Goodbye all you girls, all you men Who knows when we'll see you again Like a 
rock surrounded by the sea 5,000 miles away from many land I'm alone like a rock surrounded by the sea I'll never give my heart to any man I'm alone like the sycamore that's bending in the wind I stand alone against the pain of life I'm a low light that key I threw into the river I know I never, no I never, never will be wed That, that was just beautiful Jeanette my name is Nanette. No, no, Nanette. <laughs> she certainly has some coloraturas. Oh, come now, Max. Why don't you just listen to her singing instead? Which reminds me, I haven't seen you for at least ten years. Well, not ten, but maybe about... Seven. So, where have you been for seven years? <laughs> All good guesses. <laughs> Away! Away? Mm. Uh, for seven years? Mm. Max, couldn't you get a better lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Hugo Schwartz, and I'd like to welcome you to the Golden Star Nightclub here at Grossinger's Hotel. We have a wonderful cast tonight, and I hope that you'll have a marvelous evening. Hey, at least as good as the one that Sarah Cohn had the other night. She was walking home with her husband Isaac from a Broadway show, and she said, that was the funniest show I've ever seen. I laughed so hard, I'm half dead. Oh, really? answered her husband. Well, we'll have to see it one more time. <laughs> I hear that you're a good designer, and I need someone to fix my house up from top to bottom. Money is no object. Oh, gladly, Miss Finkelstein. What style would you like? Do you like antiques? Ugh, used furniture? No, not in my house. <laughs> well, how about Oriental? How do I come to Oriental? Well, how about French Provincial? Provincial? Ugh, God forbid. Excuse me, madam! Mm -hmm. But what period do you want? What period? What period? <laughs> I want my friends should walk in, mm -hmm. take one look, and drop dead. <gasps> period. <laughs> By me, Mr. Shane. Da 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 <laughs> By me, Mr. Shane. Da 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 da. It's not so long ago that Jewish men could easily be spotted in the shower as they were the only ones circumcised. Now, the man who performed this delicate operation was called a moil. It was at this time that Blumenfeld was walking through a street in the Bronx. He saw a window full of watches and clocks, so he decided to go in and have his watch cleaned. I do not do watches, answered the man behind the counter. I am a moil. A, a moil, asked Blumenfeld. Then why do you have all those watches in the window? So, what am I to put there? Buy me a to Shane. Da 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 are you from Mars? Yes. And you? Yes. And what's your name? 8207. And yours? 5203. Funny! You don't look Jewish. By me, Mr. Shane. Da 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 Handsome pair of little boys. 
So what are their names? Uh, Moishala and Samala. Oh, and how old are they? The lawyer, he's three, and the doctor, he's five. <laughs> I'm here, Mr. Shane. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Rabbi. Rabbi, I have only been in this country for three years, mm -hmm. and already my dream has come true. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I became the proud owner of a bright new shiny Jaguar. Could you please bless it, please? Could you say a barucha on my new Jaguar? Sir, I am an orthodox rabbi. I cannot give my blessing to a wild beast. No. Uh, rabbi, rabbi, would you please say a barucha on my new Jaguar? My friend, I am a conservative rabbi. I cannot bless an automobile. <sighs> Uh, Rabbi, hmm. Rabbi, would you please say a barucha on my new Jaguar? That's a new car that I've got. Come back, I am a reform rabbi. I know what's a Jaguar, but what's a barucha? Find me a Mr. Shane. Da 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 So now tell me, why is it y'all Jews Always talk with your hands. Could you hold my melons? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> kind of heavy. By <laughs> <laughs> me, Mr. Shane. Da 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 Tell me, what is the difference between the words angry and exasperated? Let me show you. Oh, good. Yes? Hello, is Jaime there? There's nobody here with that name, so you better check your number. Is he angry now? No, only exasperated. Oh. Pay attention. Okay. Yes? Hello, is Jaime there yet? Listen, you Michigan, I've already told you once there's nobody here with that name. So you better check your number or I will trace this call and then I will show you. He's angry now, right? No! Only still exasperated. Okay, oh, ow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Oh, hello, this is Jaime. Any messages for me? No! <laughs> <laughs> Sings it, even the birds, but though I've known it for so long, all I remember are these three or four words. By me, Mr. Shane. By me, Mr. Shane. Da 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 Lights, please, ladies and gentlemen, I have some wonderful news. They, they just announced on the radio that the Germans have capitulated. President Truman is going to speak tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. The war's over. Oh! <laughs> 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 Woo! This is not my bells. This place is somewhere else. This but is a solemn but glorious hour. I wish that Franklin D. Roosevelt had lived to see this day. General Eisenhower informs me that the forces of Germany have surrendered to the United Nations. The flags of freedom fly all over Europe. Mama, why didn't you come live with us when we asked you? It 
was too far for me. Too far from what? Mama, don't go! As the old gas stove warms the tea and rain falls all day, as the old clock chimes hourly, my son says, Mama, play. So why should I refuse to sing the one song he likes to hear? Do the warriors still I cannot play the song for him. I sit and sip my tea. I hear the sound of gas. Its hissing frightens me. Your Yiddish mama. She knows how life can make you weep. Your Yiddish mama. She sits here watching while you sleep. The dark room glows with a warm, soft light when your mother's here. When she's no longer with you, it makes the sunlight disappear. of us remembers the love our mothers gave each day. Memories burn like embers when darkness takes her love away. doesn't get here on time, we'll be going without her. Uh, maybe you shouldn't have been so hard on her. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Do you want her to ruin Jacob's bar mitzvah? Listen, if she can't come without that gym of hers, maybe it's best she not come at all. Okay, what are we supposed to tell everyone? This is our daughter Erica and her friend Jim, who looks like a poster boy for the Aryan race. Uh, Rivka, this is America. No one will care. Uh, I Besides... care, and I won't allow it. And if you don't care who your daughter goes out with, then... Rivka, please. You, know you can go without me. I don't need to go anywhere. No, not not today of all. Listen, Jacob. Yes, Daddy. Your mom will be there. She's just nervous. I know, Daddy. Of course you do. Come here, let me look at you. Oh, what a handsome man you're becoming. Now listen, it's gonna be crazy there today. We won't get a chance to talk. And and I, I wanted well, you, you see, my, my father and I, we never really said... So when he died, I promised myself that if I ever had a son, I would tell him how I felt. You know, there, there, there was this one night. It was such a, a hot night that I, I slipped out of bed and I sat in, under the window in front of our house. And then someone touched my hand and then and stroked my hair. It, it was my father. We sat there, 
silently for hours watching the stars. But then just as I was falling asleep, I, I think I heard him say to me in a whisper, Hugo, you'll always have my love and support. Now, now maybe I just dreamt it. I, I always wished that he told me when I was awake. Now, Jacob, this is an important day for you and for me too. And I want you to know how grateful I am that I was given a son as good and as beautiful as you are. That I'm proud of you. And that whatever you decide to do with your life, you'll always have my love and support. Well, Daddy, tell me more about your childhood. <laughs> Later. Put your shoes on. The cab will be here any minute. Often prep a chick for rent a fire all on a stubby's haze. On the devil let in plain a kinder lock, them all have base. On the devil let in plain a kinder lock, them all have base. Zegs your kinder lock. Then she tired and most he let on do. Sex should talk them all, who knock her talk them all, come at all ever. Sex should talk them all, who knock her talk them all, come at all ever. Study well, my child, do not be afraid, soon you will succeed. Happy is the boy who has his parents' love. What more does he need? Happy is the boy who has his parents' love. What more does he need? One day, my children, you will grow old too. Then maybe you'll feel all the pain and sadness of our daily life. Time and tears can't heal. All the pain and sadness of our daily life, time and tears can't heal. Ladies and gentlemen, in a while, the parents of the bar mitzvah boy will dance a solo. But before that, we must take care of a very important part of the celebration. Who will walk home with the table centerpieces? Oh, I will. Oh. I can't wish. Look at it, Josh. You can go. Five, six, seven, and. Again. Here we go. Here we go. darling your mom will come around just give her a little time and you Jim this is supposed to be a celebration well come to think of it you haven't danced with your with your bride yet uh, Klesrin how about some music for our newlyweds
sorry, Mama. Sorry, Papa. I've really got to go now. Oh, Jacob, can't you stay just a little while longer? No, I've got to take off. All right, all right. Just here, let me mwah, go get you some goose to take home. <laughs> Are you sure that you can't stay a little longer? Your Mama's been looking forward to this so much. Uh, no, I was supposed to pick up Betty an hour ago. Then we have to go all the way to Long Island, then back. I, I, I understand. I, I was just asking. So, uh, how are those classes going? Are you you going to be the next Paul Muni? Uh, I don't know. Well, I've got this really big audition coming up on the 5th. Wonderful. But don't tell Mama about it. You know what she gets? She just gets nervous. So, here to take home so you don't starve in that Greenwich Village with all of those beatnik schmeatniks, huh? <laughs> Thanks, Mama. You're welcome. Goose liver, my favorite. Yay! You're so funny. Mama, don't worry about me. Just take care of yourself. Remember what the doctor told you. Doctors, what do they know? Well, anatomy for one thing. They go to school for seven and now years. Now we will transfer you Wait. to the great ballroom of the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. Oh no. The crowds are all It's getting so late. Awaiting. I've really got to go now. So, happy new year. Happy new year. Happy new year. Now, it's snowing. Maybe you should borrow my hat. <laughs> my car's just down the street. I'll be fine. I'll see you next week. Happy new year. Got to give him a piece of the cake. It'll keep in the fridge. Well, it's the first time you've kissed me in months. Well, I don't remember being kissed by you either. <laughs> I was waiting for you to kiss me first. Really? After all these years? Maybe it's because it's been so many years. I wasn't sure you still found me attractive. Well, we still have a bottle of champagne left. And I still have that nightgown I wore on our honeymoon. Well, what are you waiting for? Put it on! <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, operator, I will. Erica! Oh, it's so nice to hear from you. Yes. Yes, and, and, and how are you? And Jim and the children. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yes. Yes, they arrived yesterday, and, and your mama, she, she showed them to every neighbor in a three-mile radius. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Rivka! Uh, she's in the bathroom. I, I don't think she can hear. Just, uh, hold on, darling. I'll, I'll go get her. Rivka! Rosa! Oh, yes. How about that singer in Prague? You knew? You spoke about her in your sleep. To, to me, to me, you were the most amazing woman there ever was. Do you have to go? Take care of yourself. You're not so young anymore, either. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight is a night that I've been looking forward to for a very long time. Now, as you know, I've made several films in the last few years, but I've always had a wish to perform in the city that became my home. Well, tonight I'm back in New York at the Golden Star Theater, and even though I've had the good fortune to work with some of the best known actors in Hollywood, there was always one actor who was not available to me. Well, on the occasion of his 70th birthday, he has come back to where he belongs. So join me now in welcoming the man whom we all came here to celebrate, my father, Hugo Schwartz! Thank you. Thank you. Now, with, with my son Jacob here's help, I will tell some old jokes. An old man telling old jokes. But let me tell you, there are no new jokes. They just change their coats.
Excuse me, sir. What time is it? Oh. <laughs> Unschuldig mir, wie viel ist der Säge? Excuse me, Mac, I asked you nicely, what time is it? And you gave me nothing. I then repeated the question in Yiddish, just in case that was a language that you spoke. Still nothing. You can't even give a simple answer to a fellow Jew. And now I gotta ask you this. How could a simple answer hurt you? How could an answer hurt me? Let me explain. I tell you what time it is and you start talking to me. Uh, then you ask me where I'm going and I have to tell you the truth. I'm going to Albany. You say that's where you're going too because where else could you be going on this train at this time of night? Then you ask me if I know somewhere where you could stay overnight. I have to offer you my house because I'm the only Jew in town. Now, in my house, there are two rooms. Uh, one is mine, and the other belongs to my granddaughter. You'll start some hanky-panky with her. Don't oh, deny it, she's a beautiful girl. <laughs> she will become pregnant. Ha! And I'm not about to allow my only granddaughter to marry a Jew who must be 30 years old and still doesn't own a watch of his own. <laughs> Stanley, and, and thank you all. Now, if you'll just give me a few moments to rest, I'll meet you at Sardi's. You were wonderful, Papa. Well, thank you, darling. You, you know, that part of the reason I agreed to do this was because I thought it might just bring you out from that California of yours. And, and you, Jim, I hear that you'll be a millionaire soon. <laughs> we are still far from that, but well, it's enough to feed Erica and the kids. He's just being modest, Daddy. We're actually doing quite well. And actually, Jim has a little present for you. <laughs> yes, Dad. Here. It's an airplane ticket to Poland. You get off in Warsaw, and from there it's a short train ride to Bells. This is a gift. It's from our family, and from Jacob's too. Thank you. Thank you, all, all of you. This is... But I... I, I don't think that I can go. You see, for 50 years, I promised myself that I would return to Bells. But the Bells that I want to go back to exist only in my cup, my memories. I'm afraid that for me, there is no Bells to return to. Papa, are you okay? Uh, sure, I'm okay. Never better. But I'm not so young anymore. I need a, a little time to rest after a performance, and that was quite a show. Did you hear that laughter? They loved you, Papa. Do you want to come with me to Sardi's? No, why don't you take Jim and Erica, save me a seat, and, and Stanley will help me, and I'll meet you there. No, no, don't take my car. I'll stay here with you. Please, don't. I'm used to taking care of myself. I'm neither sick nor feeble-minded. All right, Papa. You know best. <laughs> That's right. <sighs> Bye, Papa. Darling. Oh, thank you, Stanley. Wow. I'll be down in a few minutes. Now, if, if you would, please just go and call me a cab. You're a cab. Nice. Beautiful. Thank you. Mmm. Beautiful. Wait. Uh, what was your grandmother's name? Uh, Stanley? Stanley!
Papa, you were right. The world doesn't make much sense. So, tell me, did you become that famous Jewish comic? Well, maybe not famous, but I made people laugh my whole life. And were you happy? I can't answer. My hands are full. <laughs> so let us all rejoice, for he has returned back to us. He has returned back to Bells. I dream of the past, of my childhood years. Warm are the memories, warm as my tears. My room appears before me, the sun once filled its space. The garden that I planted, gone without a trace. The house now looks so old, rotting walls are covered with grass. The darkened rooms are cold, the wind rattles the cracking grass. The fence has fallen down, the apple tree is dead. Where is the joy I knew, the smell of baking bread? My father just sits, lost in his books. My mother rocks slowly in her chair and sings Oy, 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 bells Our little town bells The home that I see in a dream that will 